Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and in this video I'm going to explain to you the function of the different buttons of the Antonov 225 Autopilot in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, the Autopilot of the AN225 is a little bit different from what us Western guys are used to. And it is not only a little bit different, but things are being made more complicated by the fact that the autopilot is not fully developed. And this is not a shortcoming of the simulated plane, but this is in fact a shortcoming of the real airplane, as the Soviets basically never finished development of the autopilot and let the fly, fly anyway. So let's go ahead over what we have available on the autopilot. We'll start from left to right to the bottom. Starting on the left side, we have our speed window. This is quite simply a selector and the speed, and this is in kilometers per hour. Next to that, we have our vertical speed wheel, which is kind of similar to what you are used to from your Western-made airplanes, with the exception that the units are meters per second. One meter per second equals approximately 200 feet per minute, and we can select the wheel to a maximum of 10 meters per second into either way. So basically, we can select the maximum of 2,000 feet a minute on this wheel. Below that, we have that H3 button, and the H3 button basically synchronizes the knob to the current vertical speed that we are flying and engages the airplane into vertical speed hold. Now, we, it is not recommended to use this in order to pitch up or pitch down. So if you want to change the rate at which you are climbing or descending, it is not recommended to use the vertical speed mode, but instead it is recommended to use the pitch mode. Adjust the pitch until you have achieved the new vertical speed and then press the H3 button down here once again. And the reason for that is that the um, vertical speed wheel can be quite sensitive. So since we want to keep the flight smooth, since we are transporting up to 250 tons of cargo there, we want to use the pitch um, hold mode for that. Going up further to the right, that uh, bottom echelon up here basically is our altitude window in meters. The knob below that can be configured in the EFB to adjust the selected altitude either in hundreds or in uh, ones of meters. So I've got it configured to one hundreds now, but if you select the option down here, then you can also change it in one. The reason this is configurable is because it would take quite a while to dial something like 10,000 meters cruising altitude in if you were to use this in uh, steps of ones. So 100 is what I would recommend over here and then find unit later on. This VY button down here is basically synchronizing the pre-selected altitude to the current altitude and then maintaining that altitude. So it's basically like an altitude hold button in the Boeing 737, with the exception that it also synchronizes the pre-selected altitude up here, which Western-made aircraft usually do not do when you select altitude hold. Going on then to the middle panel, we have the ER button up here on the top left. This is basically the autopilot engage button, and as the name suggests, pressing this is going to engage the autopilot. If your autopilot should not engage while you press this, have a look at the pedestal down here and this button up here basically needs to be in this position on the right hand side as well. This is like the autopilot disconnect bar we have in the 737, so this needs to be turned on, so switch to the right and guard it for the autopilot to be powered at all. And then you can use the ER button up here in order to engage the autopilot. This guarded button up here is basically the same as the um, guarded button I have just shown you for the autopilot, but only that this covers the auto throttle. And talking about the auto throttle, the AT button up here is going to engage the auto throttle. If we go further down, the APM button basically resets the current modes into the basic modes, which is wings level and pitch hold. So this is like the button, if everything else goes wrong, you press this and the airplane is going to resume wings level and just hold the pitch. 
Going on then, in the middle, this little wheel up here is a navigation mode selector, to call it like that. And basically, this um, wheel, if it is set to course 1 or course 2, and be careful here, those terms are misleading. If it's set to course 1 or course 2, it is going to follow the heading bug that we have selected. If you want to change the heading bug, use the big red wheel down here. So, setting this rotary mode, select it to course 1 or course 2, pre-select heading mode, and then we press the PC button in order to engage the pre-selected mode from here. So, let's do an example. If we are currently flying on a heading, but now we want to follow the VOR navigation, we are going to pre-select the, the switch to the navig setting, and then we press the PC button, which engages it in navigation mode and therefore now follows the GPS track. Be aware that the PC button does not only pre-select the lateral mode, but it also pre-selects the vertical mode if there is one associated with it. So, if we are already in, for example, altitude hold, then not a lot is going to happen in any of those modes except for approach. If this is an approach and you press the PC button, glide slope mode is also armed. So the airplane is going to follow both the localizer and the glide slope. While if we are in uh, VOR mode, it is only going to use the lateral component and the vertical mode will remain in pitch hold or whatever was selected previously. If you go a little bit further down to the horizontal button over here, this basically toggles the wing level command. So when pressed, the airplane will roll from its current bank to wings level and will hold this. The vertical button up here is quite similar to the horizontal button, with the exception that the vertical button is going to toggle the vertical mode associated with the rotary selector. So basically, in any of these modes, course 1, 2, VOR, 1, 2 and NAVIC, it is going to toggle the pitch hold function. And then you can adjust the target pitch using the pitch wheel found down here on the pedestal. And if the rotary selector is set to approach, then vertical is going to arm the glide slope mode. Now let's go ahead and further to the right to this white, amber and blue buttons, VEL, MAX and HIGH. Now, these are a little bit more difficult to understand, so please listen carefully. Basically, VEL and MAX, so the white and the amber button, work similar to level change, but they have additional functions. So, if you press the VEL button, the airplane is going to maintain the indicated airspeed and the speed shown up here on the um, speed selector. Note that when VEL is engaged, the speed selector is matched to the current airspeed that you have, and then you can adjust this. However, it is recommended operating technique that you use the uh, pitch hold function and adjust the airplane pitch until you have reached the desired airplane speed, and then you press the VEL button in order to maintain that speed. It is not recommended to adjust the target airspeed with a VEL button engaged in climb or descend modes. This is different when you are level at the pre-selected altitude, but I'm going to get to that in a few moments. The amber button we have up here basically works the same as the VEL button, with the exception that it works with Mach number. Now, if you press this in a climb, the airplane is going to maintain the Mach number that you have previously commanded. However, be aware that the airplane does not have an indicator of the commanded Mach number. So basically, you have to check your airspeed indicator, you see your Mach number up here, and when the MAX button up here is pressed, it is going to maintain that Mach number, regardless of the speed that is selected on the autopilot control panel. Now, this becomes interesting when your airplane is climbing. So, in a climb, you would establish the airplane at a speed that you want to use for the climb, for example, 400 or 500 kilometers per hour. 
So you maintain 500 km per hour until you reach your target climb mark number of 0.74. And you would use the VEL button to maintain the 500 km per hour. Once you reach mark 0.74, you would switch onto max and then the airplane is going to maintain this mark number until it reaches the selected altitude. Now, when the selected altitude is reached, however, and you are using the auto throttle, the auto throttle is going to maintain that mark number as long as the max button here is active. If you want to change the mark number for the cruise, or let me rephrase this, if you used the max button for the climb and then you level off at your selected altitude and you want to change the speed at which you fly, you need to press the VAL button once again. And then the airplane is going to follow the speed indication up here. So you can imagine those two buttons similar to the level change mode in the Boeing 737. However, with the difference that in cruise they need to be switched in order to command the airplane to follow either the pre-selected speed for which you use VAL or to maintain the Mach number that you currently had when you engaged this button. So it is recommended that you use VAL to change the speed while you are level and once you have acquired the new Mach number that you want to fly you press the max button and then the airplane is going to maintain that Mach number. Sounds difficult? Have a look into the cruise tutorial. In there I'm going to explain it a little bit more. Finally, up here we have the high button, which puts the airplane into altitude stabilization. So basically, it works as an altitude hold mode. Alright, let's move over to the right side of the autopilot panel. This is a little bit of an underdocumented piece of equipment, in my opinion. So, I'll try to do my best over here, but this is not going to be a complete explanation. Basically, the autopilot modes we have covered already, those are up here on the left hand side, and this is more like an additional information panel, but it has some autopilot functions as well, and we are going to go over those right now. So, on the left hand side up here, we can use this little wheel to select the different frequencies that we have selected on the nav radio but in a digital format so over here you basically see whatever the airplane's autopilot system actually receives from the different um, nav sources and we can select VOR1, VOR2, ADF1, ADF2. Now going over to the middle button we can basically switch between true airspeed, ground speed and so on. Now this becomes a little bit more interesting up here when we go to the autopilot select speed, the indicated airspeed, and um, then the next modes we have available up there cover the um, bank in degrees and the mark number. So that's what we have up here. On the right hand side then we have the uh, radar altitude, the autopilot selected altitude, and the current barometric altitude indicated in meters. Now let's go and check out those buttons that we have up here. On the left side we have the autopilot maximum pitch limit and the autopilot maximum bank limit which we can select using those four buttons up here. Then on the right hand side this is more interesting. Down here we have a turn left button and a turn right button. If you press either of these it's basically going to set the autopilot into an infinite orbit, either to the left or to the right. On top of that, we have a turn 90 degree button. And if this turn 90 button is selected, and thereafter you press one of the buttons below, the airplane is going to either turn 90 degrees left or turn 90 degrees to the right. This only works when this button up here is armed. All right. That concludes the look at the different autopilot features on the autopilot panel up here. The final panel we need to have a look at is the one down here on the pedestal. I mentioned most of the buttons earlier, but here is a short summary. This is like the autopilot disengage bar in the 737. So if this is set to the left, then the autopilot can uh, not be engaged at all. 
if we have a look at the um, lower part. The red big button we have up here sets the heading bug on the HSI, and the little button above that determines the bank angle limit that the airplane is going to follow. So if you adjust the um, black knob up here, you can adjust the maximum bank angle that the airplane is going to bank to. Alright, the last one we have is the pitch hold in degrees and whenever pitch hold mode is active and we change this wheel over here, we can change the pitch attitude that is commanded to the autopilot. This is the default way of changing airspeed or changing your um, vertical speed when you are climbing or descending. And you should always use this to bring the airplane to the new speed or the new vertical speed and then you can use the modes up on the autopilot panel up here in order to maintain those values. So either the H3 button in order to maintain the vertical speed that you presently have or the VAL or MAX buttons in order to maintain the indicated airspeed or the Mach number that we currently have. This concludes our little look at the autopilot. I hope that you've learned something on this one and if you did then I am very much looking forward to your commentary. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to support the channel, you can do so using the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below or by becoming a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive early access to new videos before they are released to the general public. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all again very soon.